Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Cisco. We're here for today's episode of Engineers Unplugged. I'm here with Brian Gracely and Colin McNamara. Are y'all ready? We're ready. Let's go. Ready. Let's do it. All right. Are you ready? It's showtime. Cool. So uh, one thing I've seen really uh, come forth in in uh, today's uh, or sorry, VM, uh, VMworld today is this emergence of this hyper-converged solution. What so. What do you mean by hyper-converged? Well, you know, Cisco kind of, kind of Cisco and VC led the pack with taking network servers, storage, virtualization, and bundling them up into a solution, right? Right, right. Well, now if you look across the show floor, the, a lot of people are taking that concept and combining all those into single servers. Yeah, true. So why don't we do this? So uh, we're going to talk about you know things moving around, memory, disk, compute. So uh, why don't you draw, and I'll talk about what you're doing, or at least I'll hold the mic, and then we'll kind of go back and forth. Okay, absolutely. So a uh, couple of the interesting things that I've seen today. A um, lot of so solutions based on, uh, on VMware, obviously being VMworld. Also a couple of them based on other hypervisors, such as KVM, Zen, and Hyper-V. Yep. Now if you look at, we'll say, a, a, a Cisco a VSpec solution, you know, Cisco, Nexus 5000, logically here, two of them. UCS with the fabric interconnects, and then the VNX storage on the bottom, all this integrated in a rack and network together, right? Yep. Into these logical components where we're taking the individual products and creating a larger product. Now, it was really interesting to me, and we've seen this in a couple of different people on the floor. So, yeah, so, but, you know, we've seen a lot of the same things. I, I think what's really interesting is, you know, you used to have, you know, this was always storage and disks, right? This was compute. This was network, and you had to manage all these things. You had a point of management, you had a point of management, you had a point of management, and all of a sudden you started getting into these things where it was like, do I have enough bandwidth here, right? Yep. More importantly, do I have enough I.O. speed here? And people are starting to figure out, like, where do I start moving them around to optimize things, whether it's bandwidth, whether it's moving you know, speed of, of access to the data closer. Uh, so I think I've seen that trend. Well, yeah, and a lot of people are using network file systems for the their virtual servers and their hypervisors to access. And one interesting thing I've seen on a couple of these converged solutions was taking storage and server and collapsing it. So ending up with a layer here connected to a network, but having hypervisors running here. So virtual machines running in hypervisors, and then storage running either inside of a virtual machine, the virtual storage appliance, and unifying the namespaces between them. Yep. And so ending up with, instead of having to have a server be network constrained going down to its storage, very, very high speed access. You know, 40 plus gigabits inside of these, in, inside of these planes, going inside memory on the PCI Express bus, yep. and delivering these pre-integrated. Yeah, I think you know the other thing that we're seeing or that I'm seeing is um, it's almost if I if I abstract this a little bit more, what it really comes down to is you know every one of these components is is kind of becoming more and more x86 based, right? It's becoming less about super uh, you know specific hardware, about becoming you know super fast x86 hardware, and what you end up getting is these instead of it's still a stack, but you start getting sort of pools of resources, and what you're going to find is what used to be used for a compute job may now be used for some sort of compute plus storage job. Absolutely. Potentially get reused to be a, a load balancing job. I may want to you know, add on load balancing. And I think this is, you know, try not to be cliche, but this is, when, when VMware talks about software defined, right, Absolutely. it's not just them, it's people taking what Intel's doing, what the industry's doing, and saying, look, if I want to be really uh, you know, flexible, right, not so much you know, super efficient, but more flexible, I got to be able to be uh, you know, consistent across that, move the intelligence of the software up, right? Yep. And then I can, you know, I can automate broadly across all those things. You know, that, that's a great thing, a, a great trend that I've seen too. If you look at a couple different web portals that are driving the stacks, either driving in a converged stack or driving it in a hyper-converged stack. Yep. We, I've seen obviously Cisco's intelligent automation for cloud, driving you know, vSpecs, uh, driving v, v blocks, and also FlexPod. Um, you know, I've seen, uh, and I'm blanking on the name, oh my God, I need to sleep more. 
Yeah. Um, well, but, but you're seeing, no, I think, I think what you're getting at is the cool thing is, not only are we, we seeing it from some of the newer vendors, but we're seeing it even from small guys. Like for example, a little company called uh, Cloupia, yeah, yeah. Uh, right over here, uh, does full stack management, does it for FlexPod, does it for vSpecs, does it for vBlock. You know, little company, doesn't have to be BMC size company, because they're now accessing APIs, you've got standard ways of doing it. Uh, it's pretty cool to see how fast these things move. So. Hey. And I've even seen some of these web portals come out in, in some of the small open source based solutions yeah. where they're instantiating. Other interesting thing that we've seen is this movement of blocks into the server. Yeah, so uh, with all these flash acceleration cards or even moving the entire workload into the server. Yeah. So uh, I think we're seeing a big trend. I mean, uh, it's 2012, we're starting to see it just start to get out there. Um, I know you're watching it already. Oh, We're yeah. starting to watch it a little bit. So I think the big takeaway for me this week is going to be this sort of hyperconvergence. How it's packaged is going to be in a lot of different ways, but it's really becoming more standardized hardware, intelligence and software, and about APIs and, uh, and all those sort of things. So Absolutely. We probably should try and wrap this up. Amy, you want to help us wrap this back up? Um, well, any other closing thoughts you've got? Any, any, any closing thoughts? It was a good talk. If anybody wants to reach out to myself or to Colin, uh, Talk about this stuff. This was fun. Thanks for having us. Whoops. There we go. Oh, thanks. Good edit. Okay, one last thing for our viewers. Um, unicorn drawing challenge. Go. Draw a unicorn. Oh, all right. Unicorn drawing? Yeah. Oh, like Best race unicorn. Race race yeah, race go, race go. Race race. All right. This is what the audience oh, wants. Go. Got a leg. Got a body. Got another leg. A face. A flying horn. All right, there you go, viewors. So, Colin's unicorn or Brian's Colin unicorn? Wins. This is way All right, we look forward to your votes. Thanks for watching Engineers Unplugged. We'll see you next time.